Okay, so in this final segment, um, I'm going to talk more about the result that we came up with. Remember, we were looking at, <laughs> before we got uh, distracted, um, we were looking at a rectangular discrete time um, pulse sequence. And it had, it was just basically a rectangular pulse, so it was 0, 0, and then it came up to 1, and then it stayed 1 for L samples, and then it dropped back down to 0. So this is L from there to there. So that's our rectangular pulse, and we're very interested in rectangular pulses um, for lots and lots of different applications. So it's kind of important we understand this thing. All right, well, we just found out in the previous uh, lecture that in the frequency domain, this thing has a spectrum that looks like this, e to the minus j omega times l minus 1 over 2. And then, oops, I'm going to have to drag this down a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. Um, There. So now I can add on the rest of it. And we factored out the, um, the complex exponents and we wound up with sine omega L over 2 over sine omega over 2. All right. Well, the first thing I want to mention is that if, if you recall, we talked earlier, I think uh, almost a, a week ago, we talked about this thing called Dirichlet's function. And it was defined as d sub l of omega um, is sine omega l over 2 over l sine omega over 2. This should look really familiar. That's what we have here. Dirichlet's function is, you know, it, people just don't name functions unless they show up a lot. This one shows up a lot. Um, so we can write our Fourier transform in terms of Dirichlet's function. The only thing we don't have is an L in the denominator. So I have to, I have to put an L here to get the amplitudes right. DL of omega. All right, so what does Dirichlet's function look like? If anybody remembers, um, it's kind of a cool function. It's sort of like a sync function. Remember from, from all of the stuff we did in 2220 and, and previously in this semester, whenever you have a rectangular anything in one, in one domain, in the other domain, you end up with a sync function. But since this is discrete time, this is our x of n, it's discrete time, it has to be periodic in the frequency domain. So we need what's called a periodic sync function. So it, it's going to look like it's going to look like this. And it's going to have some ripples. And I'm kind of winging it here, but it's going to it's going to do this sort of thing. And it's going to repeat two pi intervals in both directions. So it kind of has a sync-like shape, but remember a sync function, a sync function does this. It dies off um, towards zero, never quite gets there, but it never repeats. But it's a, a Dirichlet function has to repeat. The Dirichlet function is defined sort of like a sync function. It's one at the origin, but since we're multiplying by L, Ours is going to have an amplitude of L. Um, what else? The Dirichlet function, um, you can tell just by looking at sine omega L over 2 um, that this numerator is going to be 0 when omega L over 2 equals pi or minus pi, right? So so this says that, that we're going to get this first zero crossing right here, 
is going to be when omega is equal to 2 pi over L. That's that first zero crossing. All right. So now we can tell things about the, the spectrum of, of a square pulse. And the number of ripples here, I kind of winged it. Um, depending on how big L is, there may be a lot of ripples before it gets out to 2 pi, or maybe just a couple of ripples. So that all depends on the value of L. I just sort of drew in th three ripples here. Um, like for a sink function, they die off forever. But here they don't die off. They have to start building somewhere right in the middle at pi they have to there's this axis of symmetry where you could fold the right part over this axis and you get exactly this same thing we started with all right so this is the spectrum of our rectangular pulse um, just a few remarks about it um, amplitude spectrum Amplitude implies it can go negative is is just equal to um, L times the Dirichlet function Right and we plot it versus a Omega and this is this is the same thing as we were talking about previously. This is just a of Omega purely real We can have a magnitude spectrum which of course is the magnitude of this, L magnitude DL of omega. Okay, so it's just the absolute value of this thing. We can have an energy density spectrum. Remember, since, since this function up here is an energy signal, we, if we plot L squared magnitude dL of omega squared versus omega, we get we get something that's related to joules per hertz, but it's not hertz, it's radians, it's um, cycles per sample. So it's a it's an energy density thing. So that's useful. And finally, uh, and a little bit more importantly, we get a phase spectrum. And that's if we plot the mag the or the phase of this thing up here versus frequency. And what what is that? Let's let's talk to, about that for a second. The phase of h of e to the j omega is let's see if I can get this on the screen is the phase of this part plus the phase of this part. Right? I mean, the phases are sort of adds. So we get the phase of this part plus the phase of this part. The phase of this part is just everything up here in the exponent, not counting the j. You should remember that um, just from our basic complex numbers that um, um, the angle of e to the jx is just equal to x. Okay, so that's what we've got going on here. So it's going to be minus omega L minus 1 over 2 so we have to, that phase plus we have to add the phase of this part well what is the phase of a real number the phase of a real number is not 0 necessarily it can be 0 if the real number is positive but if the real number is negative then we pick up either a positive or a negative pi. Doesn't really matter. Your choice. So, so that's the that's the phase response of the system. And let me kind of try to draw this thing just so you kind of know what it looks like. It's a very important result. So if I can draw some some axes. So here I'm going to draw the amplitude spectrum, right? DL, L times DL, and it's going to look like a 
Okay, these zero crossings are evenly spaced. Right, this is 2 pi over L for that one. This is 4 pi over L for that one, etc. So this is this is um, L d of omega as a function of omega. And let's draw the phase spectrum. All right, to draw the phase spectrum, we need to keep track of, as you can see up here, the sign of the amplitude. So I'm just going to keep track of where that sign goes negative. So in these regions here, the amplitude spectrum is negative. Okay. Well, let's plot this part. This is just a straight line as a function of omega. And this is going to challenge me because it's hard to draw straight lines on this on this pen tablet. But I'm already starting a Let's see if I can make a straight line. It's about as straight as I can get it. So this is minus omega L oops. L minus 1 over 2. That's what that thing is. And it has a slope of minus L minus 1 over 2. Plus, okay, I've got to add plus or minus pi. And I'll do that in, uh, maybe I'll do that in, in this color here. So whenever this thing goes negative, I'm going to pick up um, plus or minus pi. So let's just make it go negative. And this amount is minus pi. Okay, so the actual um, phase response dips down by a factor of pi there. And over here, We'll make it go up by a factor, up by an amount pi. So there's a plus pi there. And I can erase out this part. And the reason I made it go up there and down there is the basic idea that we talked about earlier, that the phase response, um, phase response, is an odd function. So since I have it within my power to make it go up or down, I might as well adhere to the, to the knowledge that phase is odd. Even though when you add or subtract pi to this thing, um, it doesn't matter whether you add or subtract. This just makes us feel better. And the magnitude or the amplitude um, is an even function. OK, so a couple quick questions, and then I'll be done here. I'm running a little long. Um, question. Supposing that L is equal to 10, what is the bandwidth? Okay, and the answer has to do with this zero crossing. This approximate bandwidth is, since this is a function of omega, is this first zero crossing, 2 pi over L. So bandwidth is approximately 2 pi over L, which is 2 pi over 10, which is pi over 5 radians per sample. All right, another question. Um, e to the minus j omega L minus 1 over 2 clearly contains a lot of phase information. Um, it contains what we call the continuous phase info. Okay, that was the straight line. So it clearly contains the phase information. Um, so the question is, does A of omega, which is equal to L times the Dirichlet function, 
Does it contain phase info? And the answer should be pretty obvious by now that uh, the answer is yes. It contains the sign information. Okay, um, this information, the sign, whether, um, whether the amplitude goes positive or neg negative is not included in here. Um, that information is included in the Dirichlet function. And the sign definitely is a part of the phase information. Which gets reflected as added or subtracted pi's. Again, that's arbitrary. So it does contain sign information. Therefore, you can't totally ignore it when you're talking about the phase of the of the signal. All right. Well, that concludes our our lecture for today.